This is 5-Minute Feng Shui, podcast number 108, Managing Depression and Anxiety with Feng Shui. Welcome to the 5-Minute Feng Shui podcast, where each week I talk about how to move energy and make money. You'll learn how to create a prosperous home and an abundant life using classical Chinese Feng Shui. I'm your host, Katie Weber, publisher of the Red Lotus Letter, Feng Shui Easing for Wealth. Each week, I'll cover Feng Shui topics that can help you improve your life, share inspiring stories, and always end with three easy to implement Feng Shui tips that you can put to work right away, and usually in about five minutes. Now let's get started on the five minutes that could change your life. Hello there, my feng shui friend. I hope you're having a fantastic day. It is Monday and the start of a brand new week. And here in the US, we have a new president, or so it seems. <laughs> we gotta wait till January 20, uh, 2021 for it to uh, be finalized with that swearing in, but we actually technically have a president elect is what Joe Biden would be considered at this point. And, um, you know, this has been a really contentious election. It's put a lot of people on edge. Don't worry. I'm not going to say anything about, you know, uh, anything political other than just talking about that we had an election. I'm not going to say, you know, Biden's great, Trump's horrible, Trump's great, Biden's horrible. It's really, to me, uh, a question of where the people are and where is uh, the the state of our country and how can we move forward and, and, and the state of the world. How can we all move forward? I am so aware of how many people listen to this podcast and uh, each month it's growing by thousands. <laughs> it's just absolutely mind-boggling and and thrilling because I get to hear from people all over the world and and there's a lot of people who are very very interested in our our election and and understandably so and um, one of the things that um, I can say very proudly about the the election no matter who had won uh, is that I think the winner was the American people for standing up and getting out the vote even at the time when it was the absolute you know worst time that we've had this this past year the whole world has had with this pandemic uh, but I do want to to call out and just just say how wonderful you are everybody to Americans to everyone around the world uh, we're getting through this we are, we, we've come a long way uh, in this past year and a long way through all this um, infection and pandemic and there is a very bright light on the horizon, I'm happy to report, and it is the sixth star. It's the reigning star, and it's coming to the year of the ox, and I've been working so hard on that, and I am thrilled to be talking to you about it and to let you know that you have reason to be hopeful, and I want you to lift your sights towards something bigger and more important. And um, it's even more important than two old men battling it out <laughs> for, for election, in my opinion. <laughs> you know, it's really about, you know, where we are as a world and as a nation and, and as people individually. And that's one of the things I'm concerned about. I'm concerned about you. Uh, I'm concerned about some of the emails that I get and some of the comments and and articles I read and, and things that I see online and so on about, you know, where we are in our, our, our headspace. This has been a long, long road to hoe this past, this past year. It's been filled with a lot of uncertainty. And that uncertainty, I find, is one of the bedfellows of hopelessness, uh, of depression. And back in, let me see, I guess it was 2018. No, 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 no. It would have been 2019, early 2019. I had recorded a podcast about hopelessness and depression. And because we're having such a difficult time right now, we're coming into the holidays. We have been, we've got corona fatigue. We've got pandemic fatigue. We've got the mask wearing. There are some times that I'm in the stores and it's hot where I am. We have not had, a, we had two days of cool weather and uh, we're in almost in the middle of November and 
And sometimes that that mask, you know, if you live in a hot location, it is um, it, it gets it it after a while it becomes sort of suffocating. Anyhow, that that sort of feeling of of that um, you know can't catch your breath or the the worry that that just kind of lingers over with us over us and in, and especially with this feeling like you know there's a, we don't know what's going to happen next we and we don't and we never do <laughs> but at least we know you know we didn't have to worry pre pre pandemic you know about uh, being infected at every turn whereas especially here in the US I'm sorry to say that we're leading the world in infection and death rates it's horrible and I'm very sad about that um, anyhow it's uh, something I've written a lot about in my year of the ox forecast and I'm talking a lot about because there's a real thing about about your mind and your head now the six star that's coming in into 2020 and the year sorry 2021 <laughs> gotta get move ahead Katie that this star that's coming in is actually related to your head. So your head space is really a important fixture this year in, in all ways. Obviously, there's a lot of attention there. But I want you to focus on one part of this six star, <clears throat> and that's taking care of yourself. Obviously, health is one the number one. But I've broken down health into what does health mean? And health isn't just you look like, uh, you know, a bodybuilder or you've got the strength and stamina of a, of a marathoner. It's also resiliency. It's also optimism, faith, character, avoiding the things that are, are negative and going toward the things that are positive, that are balanced, that are fair, kind, true. Those are those things that keep our mind in good shape. And that's one of the things I, I wanna talk about today. And I'm gonna talk about the, the feng shui of depression and hopelessness, because I'm really concerned about how the pandemic has a, affected your outlook and how you might be feeling and how anxiety can can build and so I want to talk about how to use feng shui so that you can handle this and that you can get through this and not just get through it but come out on the other side doing well I believe you can I believe in you and I have faith in in you I have faith in in um, in the world I do I think at our, our heart of hearts even some of the people that you might think are questionable. <laughs> I think if you really push them, really backed them in the corner, they would be, you know, they would be having a seed of wanting something better and something to be good and to work out. I think we all do. And, uh, but there are times though, things just get too much. It adds up and you you feel like you're you're collapsing you feel like the 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 world is sort of spinning out of control and you're hanging on for dear life and there are times when you just want to crawl in a hole and pull a blanket over your head and it's that's that's the thing that worries me and i want to talk about you know personally well, let's let's just talk really personally about uh where you are in terms of of health and your 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 mental outlook is a huge part of your health because if you are fearful or anxious one of the things that can happen is like panic attacks and those those mimic the symptoms of a heart attack they're extremely frightening it's important that you watch out not just for yourself but your loved ones and your family members to to think about the uh, look at those signs see where they're getting maybe withdrawn and um and and reach out to friends and family members and loved ones uh to help uh just check in with them you know there's another issue and uh, i'm going to bring it up and this is suicide i worry about this this is a uh, i think one of the the problems that we have with the seven star that's been the reigning star for the year it rules the lungs it rules the mouth i mean have you ever heard the word aerosolization so much in your entire life and but yet it is something that is uh it can become overwhelming and in fact there's someone that i knew um 
and through my family who was very distraught this year she helped um she helped a family with covid cope and dealt with all manner of of issues uh, from hospital to funeral things all kinds of stuff and she took her own life and she just got dressed up in her her best clothes and made herself look really pretty and got uh, two bottles of wine and a big bottle of pills and um, and and that was that and no one knew and no one reached out to her and I only found out after the fact she was an acquaintance and I'm really sad about that it it makes me uh, very very sad to think that I you know I only saw her a few times I would have liked to have had a chance to to have a conversation but um, you know reach out to those that you think might be uh, that might be having some difficulties with this whole thing I mean the anxiety the worry and all that and and please reach out yourself if you're having those kinds of anxiety to the point that if you feel like you can't go on please just make one last phone call to a friend to the National Suicide Prevention Hotline please call please reach out see your doctor please promise me you'll do something because I don't want to lose you or or lose any more people due to this this um, difficulty that we're, we're going through so this is uh, something that we're seeing a lot more of actually in in women and in girls uh, in fact there was a, a study about this increase that ha- suicides among girls have doubled uh, between 2007 and 2015 this is a 50 percent increase and it's because a lot of people are coping with depression they're 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 they feel hopeless and in particular women who are not you know uh, I think we're we're usually the ones caring for each other and I'm when I see that I think there's somebody that doesn't have faith in the future they're not optimistic they don't feel hopeful we've got to find a way to feel hopeful right Um, a lot of these issues that are coming up for that hopelessness they're societal things like the pandemic uh, stress anxiety disconnection and even a lack of belief in the future you know a lot of times depression and hopelessness can be la- rooted in a lack of sense of purpose or fulfillment you know now everybody uh, feels depression or despondency or the blues uh, it could be from health worries a relationship some job problems or just problems that seem insurmountable insurmountable and I know I've gone through my own low periods I really have I I have had periods where I was so frustrated and and I actually was told by a doctor I was uh, I was clinically depressed now I knew at the time <laughs> I was getting cold when I got out of the shower uh, in in July and uh, I could see if that were in February and then I was walking with a sweater in August in North Carolina it gets hot there and humid and I kept telling the doctor that um, you know I think I had a thyroid issue now that's that so this is why you want to call your doctor is you want to make sure that if you do have some sort of underlying medical condition and you can that could cause depression like for me it was my thyroid it was a low thyroid level and and but he was all ready to put me on an antidepressant and I told him I'd be happy to take that if I didn't have these weird brown spots on my face that come up in the sun or that I wasn't putting a sweater on to walk my dogs in August something seems wrong about that I know of no depression that makes you shiver (laughs) in the August sun and I said why don't we um, humor me why don't you humor me and let me try thyroid for a month or six weeks if I still don't feel better I'm having all this I'll, I'll I'll take the antidepressant and uh, sure enough I you know all of a sudden the lights came back on I was my usual hot tamale and uh, (laughs) and I felt so much better but I'm so glad I went to go see the doctor because all those symptoms yes they were they were symptoms of of depression in terms of low energy wanting to sleep a lot that kind of thing so there's a lot of times that there could be a physical thing but it there's it could also be that you 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 are having some some uh, difficulties dealing with things or you're feeling uh, blue or despondent 
you know, um, sometimes depression is is a, is um, a lack of purpose or fulfillment. You know, everybody uh, has those uh, those concerns, and it, that despondent outlook can often show up in our homes, literally. Like the home of a depressed person, they often will show those internal struggles. They could be, you know, too much shopping, anger shopping. I, I talked about that in the year of the, <laughs> the ox. I'm very concerned about women. Women are hosting an energy next year that can lead to depression and um, and that can lead to this sort of inside out kind of anger. It could show up as anger, but it's really depression or feeling of hopelessness. So I'm, I, I have some concerns about this. I also have concerns about it for men in the in the coming year. And that's why I'm doing this this podcast and kind of redoing it again, because I wanted to talk to you uh, about feeling hopeful or ways we can use feng shui to raise up your hopeful meter and so that we can raise up your energy and help you feel better. Now, obviously, let's talk about these these things, how they can show up in, in feng shui. So one of the things that I notice is if my house looks bad, it is it is a total bummer, right? <laughs> that big old uh, mess in the in the kitchen sink and stuff scattered all over the place, it just, it, it, it brings your energy down. I'll tell you what brings my energy. That actually doesn't bother me too much, actually, <laughs> dishes in the, uh, in the kitchen and that kind of stuff. And, but everybody's different. Everybody's got something that bothers them more than another. But for me, my thing is uh, when I see something broken or damaged in the house, that bugs me. That just like, and or something that doesn't work properly, I feel that. I actually feel that 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 lack of or that brokenness, I should say. And it, it, I can feel my energy flag and sink. And so this is why, actually, this is a kind of a good thing about the pandemic. The, the home renovation and home center sales are like through the roof. There's a backlog of orders of uh, home appliances, durable goods, as they're called in the in the stock market, durable goods like refrigerators and washer and dryers and ovens and that kind of thing are through the roof. There's a backlog, a waiting list, and that's because a lot of people have found that that one place that makes them feel really good is their home and that by doing more for their home, it makes them feel better. So this is a really great outlook if you're feeling kind of down is to work on your home uh, that could be repairing things and and it could be you know hey ordering a new fridge <laughs> I need a new fridge that's why I bring that up <laughs> I'm ready for one Tim and I are going to be renovating our kitchen and uh, I'm really excited for it and I will be I'll tell you about it as once it gets underway because uh, if I'm excited I, I love I love to tear down stuff <laughs> and and, and build it back up. So let's let's get back to this um, how your f- house can reflect you. So look at the look at what's going on around in your homes. Are do you have unmade beds? Is it dark inside? You can see a person who's feeling depressed a lot of times they maybe they've got clutter around, maybe there's some maintenance issues like dr- dripping faucets or dead plants, peeling paint, that kind of thing. And can feng shui help that? Yeah, absolutely. I really can. I do believe when you combine feng shui with other efforts like your diet, socializing, connecting with nature and finding things that you enjoy, it will all work to work for you. Uh, Your eyes take in the world. And when you see a dark home with unmade beds or a sink full of dirty dishes and dead plants by the front door, this reinforces any sadness, hopelessness, and depression. It will reinforce a negative or yin state of mind. So this is why putting effort into your home puts effort into you. I am one with my home. You are one with your home. Your home contains you. Like your body contains your spirit, your home contains you. So why wouldn't that energy from your home that is outside of you externally radiate inward and vice versa it's it's a symbiotic relationship we get we get sad we don't make our beds we don't make our beds we get sadder you know it's it just goes like that so let's talk about some things you can do 
start every day strong. You know, one of my favorite shows was Downton Abbey. Oh my gosh, was that not beautiful? It was, it just was a visual delight to watch it. I loved how it showed the house coming alive in the morning. The fires were lighted, the curtains were thrown open, sunlight streamed in, the cleaning and cooking began in earnest, bells rang when breakfast was served or requested. Uh, take a cue from this TV show and start your day strong. I actually do that. I get up in the morning and I go in and I get a cup of coffee, I read the Wall Street Journal, um, talk with Tim about our days, and we get dressed, and that's the first thing we do is we, after we have our coffee and paper, we go into the bedroom, we both make the bed every day without fail, <laughs> unless I'm going to change the sheets. Okay, all right, that, there's my ex exception, <clears throat> pardon, and then we, we throw the curtains open. I make it a point every night to close the blinds, close the curtains, and every day to make the bed, open the curtains, open the blinds, and let all the sun in. It reinvigorates the bedroom every day. That reinvigorates me every day. So take a cue from this TV show and start that day strong by getting up maybe a little earlier and having some coffee or tea, setting those little rituals like that, opening the curtains, reading a newspaper or your tablet, then get dressed. Do your whole hair makeup thing and look your best even if you're staying at home. You know, when you look better, you feel better. It's, it's absolutely true. Then after you've opened the curtains, made your bed, gotten dressed, go to the kitchen, make yourself a good breakfast, do the dishes and put them away when you're done. A strong start to the day is a good way to shape your mind in a positive direction. And then at the end of the day, you'll be getting into a made bed. Does that not feel great? It feels fabulous. It feels ceremonial. Pulling your sheet backs, sheets back, pulling up the blanket or comforter, however it is that you make your bed. To me, it's a, I love the ritualness. Create rituals around your house of making your bed and your morning routines and, and your evening routines of kind of slowing down and shutting down. It helps you sleep better. It helps you wake up better. Next, let's talk about unsticking your home's chi. Now, it's true. Your chi can't get stuck and that can cause you to feel stuck in your life. Look around your house to find where your clutter zones are. Maybe it's a stack of mail that you haven't gotten to around uh, to, to looking at or throwing away or, or recycling. Clear off the tops of your kitchen counters and tackle any piles that you have around the house, like piles of clothes in the closet or bathroom counters. Yes, I will. Okay. True confession here. I'm a pilot. I pilot in my closet. <laughs> I have a, a very bad tendency to just, you know, leave my clothes where they drop. Now I have actually, since the pandemic has come around, I have made a very concerted effort every day is to hang up my clothes and put them away. And so now I have a nice, clear, open closet floor and it's not a big mess. And, you know, hey, I, even a feng shui lady can have her, her weaknesses too. Hey, we all do. Don't, don't, don't think we don't. Uh, I know some, I know some feng shui experts and there's some, there's some uh, uh, feng shui skeletons in their closets. <laughs> I've even looked in there. Anyhow, okay, let's talk about this. So we're talking about your home uh, and, and getting that chi unstuck. Now, when one way that we feel stuck is when our eyes have no room to roam. Picking up rugs or uncluttering the countertops and removing piles will help speed up your home's chi and lift your spirits by giving your eyes open space. Your eyes are a fire element and smothering from clutter and a lack of visual space can literally put your fire out. Let's get that fire started. You know, fire is the element of joy and optimism and the eyes and the heart are connected. Those are the two elements of our body body of our physicality that are that are connected to the element of fire joy and optimism I mean it, if you can't think of a fire as being joy and optimism just think of what we love to make by the fire that'd be s'mores <laughs> so uh you know uh, just think uh you think s'mores when you're thinking of of taking uh clearing off the counters and picking stuff off of the floor it's going to make uh, a great uh, way to lift energy and help your eyes get more uh, visual space and and lift a heavy heart. I promise you. Let's talk about lifting your burden. 
Now, sometimes our homes can become a repository of our lives, including the happiest and the saddest moments in them. Yet, a lot of houses are houses of pain. They hold the wedding dress that you wore, but maybe you kept after your divorce. They can hold the clock from your grandmother who's passed but stopped working years ago. Or maybe it's the ashes of a pet or loved one that you can't part with. Whatever brings your energy down does not belong in your home. Learn to let go of old obligations to things that lower your energy and serve as reminders of what did or didn't happen in your life. I give you my permission to throw them away, donate them, or put them on the curb with the sign that says free. Now, you obviously don't want to do that with ashes of a loved one or a pet, but take it, get a pet cemetery, go get a mausoleum, go get uh, those uh, those things placed properly. Bury your pet's ashes in the yard. Spread and have a ceremony for your loved one's ashes. Don't keep the dead in a house of the living. It will lower your energy. It will lower your home's chi and it will create a, an energetic burden on you. So and this doesn't have to just be ashes. It could be uh, a contentious thing. So, oh, well, grandma was going to give me that rocking chair. No, she said she was going to give it to me. Or Aunt May said I was going to get that china. Whatever is a bone of contention or has bad memories associated with it, find a way to either get right with it and feel okay about it or get, get it out. It's, this is about, li- you don't want to look anywhere and see pain or feel pain very important that we do that. The other thing we want to do is see things differently. Too often we get a rut into a rut in our lives because our houses look the same all the time. Uh, Hence why (laughs) all that home renovation and remodeling and redecorating has been going crazy. Wayfair was having a problem. Truthfully, Wayfair, you know, the home decorating place, they were having a problem with their stock. It's taken off since the pandemic. Uh, This is when a virus actually did some some good for this company because people started ordering and redecorating. Um, Look at the picture over the sofa. Is it always there? Maybe you can move it somewhere else. When you need a different picture in your life, change the pictures in your home. Take them all down and then one by one begin putting them up in a different place. This forces you to actually see your home and your life in a completely different way and help you out of that visual rut. Remember, your eyes and heart are connected. And what happens is after a while when we see the same things in the same place all the time, we start ignoring them. We just don't see them anymore. But what happens is you do this visual number on your brain when you move them all around and then you have they force you to look at it because it's different. And our minds are taught to pay attention when something's different. And this will help kind of get you to, what did it sure say in Moonstruck? Snap out of it. And <laughs> sometimes we just need to snap out of it, right? All right, now let's look at water. Water is something that can create some problems in your home. Water is an element of sadness, depression, and hopelessness. And when there's depression, there can sometimes be an excess of water. Now, how does water show up? Well, it can be literal water, like a dripping faucet, a running toilet, maybe too many blue or dark colors. If there's any water in pools or an area of your yard that stays wet, this can lower your energy. Look for dark colors, dark rooms, and sources of water or wetness. A good place to look under the bathroom and kitchen sink. You may not know you even have a link until you lo- leak until you, you look for one. Um, so get it help because it will help stop that drip, drip, drip of sadness. I'm going to throw in another one and that is to check your closet. I, I know some folks, um, some ladies I should say, not men, ladies who could, you know, outfit 30 people for a funeral. They've got so much black and blue and dark colors in their closet put those to the back of the closet. This is the time when we want to push those away and embrace the light. The more you wear dark and moody colors, the more you can attract negative energy from other people uh, and it brings your energy down. So uh, look for that in your closet. Try to maybe even make a section. It's that will be your black hole in your closet. It's all dark over there, you know, who knows? (laughs) Anyway, but look for those clothes. Uh, So we talked about watching for water. We talked about clothes. Now let's talk about activating. 
This is what we need to do, right? Because people who are sad, a lot of times they withdraw. They don't, they're, they're not as, as active. And in our house, we want to have movement, light, and sound. Feeling depressed can sometimes be alleviated by movement. This is why doctors often say, get out and exercise. Just that movement and moving your body is really good. And I'd like to say vitamin D is also great. But in your home, you want to have movement, like turn on fans, have a TV going, have the stereo playing with some uh, happy music play. Who says stereo? <laughs> it's an MP3 player or something or a speaker or what have you. Uh, just get movement going in your house uh, because if you can get your chi going, it's good for your heart and spirit. And don't forget to turn on lighting. Keep it nice and bright during the day and at night. You know, realtors know that during a showing, every light on the in the house should be turned on, and that's that fire element again. This lifts the energy of the house, and a home lifted with energy is one that's appealing to owners and buyers. Uh, keep your lights on in the foyer and living room. Another important area for lighting is the kitchen. This room represents fire, and it should never be allowed to go out. So add a little lamp or uh, even um, a night light that you can plug in that will keep that fireman always warm in your kitchen. A warm warm hearth, a warm meal. No, what feels better, right? Nothing. <laughs> you can also make a daily practice of ringing a bell in your home to clear that stuck or stagnant energy because sound cuts through old energies. You can start every day by ringing a bell at your door. Maybe after you threw open the curtains and opened the blinds and made your bed, you just ring a gong bang a gong that's a good old song right anyway bang a gong or ring a bell whatever suit floats your boat whatever suits you best uh you you want to kind of jump that starts with your career circle the bell or uh, circle the front door three times with the bell to clear and energize your home also connect with nature make sure that your health plants are healthy and lush look around your yard for anything that's overgrown touching the house and cut it back you don't want to have anything that's growing over the windows so important because let's think about it windows are your outlook literally they let you look out of your house and if you've got shrubs that have turned into godzilla you want to cut those down or take them out and replace them Re put in some new plants even better get you outside get you moving and get you a new plant and that doesn't cover up your windows so important really uh try to spend time outdoors and i can't say enough therapeutic things about gardening seeing something living and growing that you have to tend to that you get to see flower or maybe make a tomato uh use fresh herbs if you've got a just you know a pot you can grow something uh, and I think it's so important that we that we interact with nature uh, outdoors getting outside in that vitamin D uh, is so so important for you vitamin D is very important for your brain function and um, and uh, I mean just look at ha uh, Hawaii is supposed to be the happiest place in the world <laughs> what a surprise right <laughs> who wouldn't be happy there uh, yeah I, and I know because I lived on an island the f uh, forgotten Hawaiian island that uh, was way out in the middle anyhow uh, of the uh, Pacific Ocean even uh, uh, Hawaiians looked at me in awe when I told them where I lived anyhow uh, uh, let's talk about brightening up and lightening up you know if you've got dark colors on your walls and furniture maybe try a new coat of paint you know that gets you out gets you moving gets you doing something nice and new and fresh man I tell you what that is a that is a, a you know some people like the smell of cookies uh, baking in the oven for me it's fresh paint oh yeah any day <laughs> I don't mind getting a roller out not one little bit and uh, I can uh, I and, and I'm ambidextrous with a paintbrush I got to tell you I'm pretty proud of that uh, but you know do something to redecorate and lift your your spirit maybe even move furniture around I think that's great let's talk about a couple other important things that's making plans and keeping a schedule there's something about accountability for how it keeps us anchored so like pets do you know caring for our pets our kill our children keeping a schedule makes us have a sense of continuity and control and that's so important for your outlook uh, planning is another way to keep yourself feeling hopeful like a star twinkling that you can set your eyes on one of the things that's that I will tell you has been uh, something that uh, has made me unhappy this year is that I, I we can't really plan for a vacation and there's vacations that we're, we need to travel to and we really can't don't have that option and that's a big old fat bummer for me <laughs> anyway. 
anyway, but there are other things that I am planning on, like a kitchen renovation, some new gardening that I'm doing in the backyard. So those things, those plans that I have for the my garden, my kitchen, and, and so forth, that makes a difference. And I'm kind of keeping a little eye toward the end of 2021 to do something really uh, special uh, for travel. Uh, also, my son is graduating from college. Yay! <laughs> oh, I can't wait. January represents the last tuition payment for four years. We're so proud of him. Anyhow, but um, yeah, so those are all, those are all wins in my book. And, um, but put certainty in your life, even if it's a simple certainty, it makes a big difference. Um, Elevate the mundane. This is one of the things that I use to help keep me going. And that is to make something simple into something sublime and you can do this by ma- doing something ordinary and making it eventful like one of the things that i have done weekly without fail since the pandemic is to buy flowers from my house every single week i put them in two locations well maybe sometimes three uh, the first is always in the living room because i feel like in the center of the house i want something blooming I want something growth. I want something happy. I want something with that yang energy. I think it's so important. You come into my my home, into my living room, and there's something fresh and beautiful flowering every week. I also have the coolest little vase that I got when we lived in Mexico, and it hangs on the wall. and every, And it's right by my kitchen sink, and I can where I can look out and see my beautiful lemon tree that is full of lemons, and that delights me to no end. And that that uh, little wall vase uh, is there and it's always something fresh and beautiful and sweet and it just makes my day uh, to see it there. I also sometimes will uh, take one of those flowers or two and put it in a vase on my desk and that you know it's and but here's what's important is one it's a routine for me. Two uh, I can I'll go out and make a special trip just to buy flowers. Instead of buying flowers with the groceries make it something this is where you elevate something make a special trip to to buy flowers that can make a big difference do something uh really special you watch tv every single night maybe buy a fire pit watch the fire make some s'mores you know in, for an evening instead of doing that make make it s'more sunday you know maybe on sundays you have s'mores with your family you have game night you know doing those simple things really makes a, a difference i'd say hey for spaghetti saturdays uh, make it a night in a, on a piazza in rome buy some fresh parmesan and pasta at your your grocer come home add a red checkered tablecloth you know the whole thing just do it up and put on some uh, great background music. Make what would be just a regular spaghetti dinner into a special spaghetti dinner. That's the point. Uh, When we find ways to do small things in a bigger and more conscious way, it elevates and energizes them, making them feel more special. And that's great feng shui. It's also a way to keep our eyes on something bigger than ourselves and keep us feeling hopeful. Well, I hope this has been a helpful episode for you. I just wanted to just talk with you, um, you know, one to one, you know, just you and me about about how things are going and and how you're feeling and, and some of the things that, you know, I've thought about and some of the things I've dealt with um, when I heard about this, this acquaintance's um, suicide, I was shocked. And I, to this day, I, I, it makes me very sad. And uh, I just wish that she could have reached out and um, to someone. And um, anyway, so if you are in that position and you're feeling sad, I think you can do some things around your house that will help you. And hopefully you've gotten some some ideas about that. And um, if you're feeling really down, please reach out. Please contact somebody, your doctor, a therapist, your, your religious, um, advisor, anyone, um, reach out, uh, to, to a, a number of people, you know, pull in, pull in all the, all the resources you can, uh, to help yourself. I, I just want you to get through this being healthy and happy, and, uh, we're going to get through this together. So I, I have faith in you and I have faith in, in us and the world and, and in goodness. So let's, 
let's move on in that in that stead and in the meantime i hope you have a terrific week and that you feel terrific go make some s'mores i know this is a really long episode but um you're that important so you take care and i will talk to you next week on the next episode of five minute feng shui I hope you enjoyed today's episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui. If you did, please be sure to share this episode with your friends on social media and let's change the world one home at a time. For more Feng Shui information and inspiration, sign up for my free weekly Feng Shui e Just drop by redlotusletter.com to sign up and I'll be in your inbox every Wednesday. And if you like this episode, I'd love it if you left a review on iTunes. If you do, send me the screenshot of your review to katie at redlotusletter.com with iTunes review in the subject line. And I'll send you a free gift as my thank you. I'll see you next week on the next episode of 5-Minute Feng Shui.